everyone, and welcome to 500 Open Tabs. I'm Kava Taharian. And I'm Hannah Hillam, and today we have a special guest. She's an illustrator and designer from Oklahoma City, and has been working anime and comic conventions since 2007. Please welcome Alexandra Brat. Hello. Hey, Alex. Welcome. <laughs> Yo. Welcome to the nice podcast. Nice to see you. Podcast. Indeed. Nice to see you, too. It's It's been a minute since uh, Emerald City, where Emerald we got City. to be feral. We hope. Yeah, that was a fun a, time. Last time we so all hung good. out, <laughs> we were up in That's Seattle a, in uh, yeah. what was it March of this yeah. year. We had an evening after, as often <laughs> happens, after a convention's over, we all just, go I don't even know, go insane because you're yeah. so exhausted. And yeah, I'm tired artists yeah. just feeding off of each other's manic energy. It's great. Everyone loves us. Uh, <laughs> Extremely yeah, popular. Totally. We Extremely. believe that. As long yeah, as we first, believe that. I think I first met you at Emerald City, right? It was like a few last years ago. Year. No, two years ago. Two, two I think it was two years ago. Twenty twenty one to what? Twenty twenty two. Yeah. No, I don't know. Four, Let's just keep saying numbers. This Never is crucial stop. for the podcast to know which year it is. <laughs> one, two, five. Um, <laughs> Some time ago. Yes. Anyway, uh, yeah. yes, you you also know another one of our friends, I believe, Stephen Ray Morris is a person. Oh, yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, Steven. who I saw this morning. I, I was on you my walk to go morning? get coffee and I saw, saw I've him? seen Stephen a couple times because I just walk around in North Hollywood when I go get coffee uh, and he's there. Uh, Stephen sighting. Mm-hmm. Stephen sighting in the wild. He said hello. Um, but Alex, <laughs> thank you for joining us on our podcast. Uh, I'm sorry that you have to do this, but we're thrilled to have you. Ah, uh, well, you know, <laughs> I try <laughs> my best apologize? to donate my time, the altruistic side. Don't you? <laughs> Uh, so why don't you tell us about your your open tabs? How many tabs you got open? Are you an open ha- tab haver? Is the first question. I believe that's actually how you had me do a little blip on the Emerald City live stream that you did. Was oh, because that's I was like, right. Oh, oh that's right. I nice forgot to meet about you, that. Kave. I actually have five hundred open tabs right now. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what so what it's tab actually four ninety five right now. Oh, four ninety five. Same. Mm-hmm. That's... Very impressive. Hold on. No, I got to check. I totally forgot you came to our absolute disaster of a live stream that we did on YouTube where we couldn't figure out yeah. how to get two headphone mics to work. It was n- Oh, you mean the commonality of me yeah. and a disaster <laughs> and headphones. <laughs> Not the last oh. 45 minutes. Oh, wait, I actually have a watch on this one. Oh. Listen, it was a good time. It doesn't matter. It's okay. We were having fun. I was singing songs. Hannah was getting sweaty. I don't know. It's just usually what we do. I blacked out. Um, I don't remember the last yeah. hour. <laughs> I made anyway, so you got a lot of tabs open. You're part of it. You're into it. Thank you for joining <laughs> us on the show. And since you are our guest, we're going to let you go first with your story. Why don't you tell us what you've got? Okay. Well, this summer, uh, this new Amazon Prime series came out called My Lady Jane, based off this wonderful book series written by a few authors. So I have no idea what their names are, but it's really good. So the book's the same name, My Lady Jane. And it's about Lady Jane Grey, who got beheaded, you know, um, Tudor era at its finest. Let's just behead everyone. Um, oh, yeah. But basically, she the, the good old uh, days. was accused of usurping <laughs> the days. throne by Queen Mary. And, Which she did. Uh, and she got eaten. <laughs> so. She did. Uh, but this, Even is, though this is a little twist. Her cousin um, was like, you're going to be the queen. They still that's killed right. her. Doesn't matter. That's right. Doesn't matter. That's right. <laughs> Mary, Queen of Scots over there just like. Psycho. What's going on over there? Anyway. Mm. And so Continue. a little bit different than the book, there was a, a position of a power, some would say, that was introduced that I was not familiar with in all of anything I know about the British monarchy, which is not a lot. The groom of the stool was mentioned. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, what? Like shit? <laughs> you get oh, married no. to shit? <laughs> Yeah, is this so the remember story, story how you like, sit on? All right, Alex, or... <laughs> you got to be on deck. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Groom of the stool. That's my nickname from now on. <laughs> stool. <laughs> oh, that was a good, that was a good royal accent. <laughs> why, why, thank you. Should I continue this in this accent the entire time? The no. All in the accent. <laughs> I hereby decree Ew. that the groom of the stool must continue Ooh. this tab. <laughs> The tail of the groom of the stool. <laughs> okay, wait, or, so what's the groom of the stool? <laughs> groom of the king's close stool. Oh. Oh, what? Oh, indeed. Indeed. So they added more words to that and it makes less sense. It, uh, classic <laughs> English language. It's classic. 
So initially, this position, uh, much as you would anticipate, uh, if you have, <laughs> got it. Oh, uh... <laughs> the stool. <laughs> He's already. You've already got him. This is already my favorite tab. I, I know, right? <laughs> I was like, oh, man, this seems like such a thing that they would do. I hope that I have not You're right. uh, double-decked, really. <laughs> Here, here's what I'm going to say. You're yeah. taking something that is from both of our, like, this is something he would do, but this is also something that I would do. Because it's right. all yeah, about, like, o- old English crap. And then he's talking yes. about probably poop crap. and toilets, which is what <laughs> yeah. he loves. I'm so I'm glad. Get- then I could join this together. You've already knocked it out of, of the park. Yeah. Already See, this is what you great. missed. You've missed me. Yeah, of we course. Have. So this position, uh, groom of the stool, started out, <laughs> as you might, you know, infer, uh, with a bit of ass wiping. A little bit. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it oh, is no. Uh, initially, as, as the Wikipedia article says, Initially responsible for assisting the king in creation <laughs> and hygiene. <laughs> what? what does that mean? Like just wiping he jumps up. on his belly. <laughs> it is the physical intimacy of the role uh, that <laughs> led to the role. The man having a lot of confidence uh, in himself and the knowledge uh, that he gained from such a intimate role oh uh, he saw everything he saw everything he smelled everything too oh. dude do you think they still do that you think charles is in there with some dude like what unfortunately <laughs> uh queen victoria kind of oh wait oh. no it wasn't queen victoria they actually were still using it i was At gonna say it did evolve throughout yeah, it could have just the, have a different name now the, the centuries the, the royal but yes, King Edward VII yeah, be... in 1901 discontinued. Oh, seventh. Okay. The now. Duke of Colon is essentially what it's going to be now. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Or the Duchess of Colon. Listen, no, it's 2024. Indeed, no. Anyone the can Duke. be part of that role. I like indeed. Duchess sounds funnier. Duchess of Colon. But Duke is the Duke of poo. the Deuce. Duke Ooh. of the Deuce. That's even better. There we go. There's your, definitely your a line honor. item for that on the Your Honor. <laughs> But Your it was honor? a position of honor a little bit. Uh, at so least could, they like, definitely chosen? told the person, poor person who's subjected to that, that it was. It um, sounds like you're like a dish. Like when I was a dishwasher, they'd be like, I know you're just a dishwasher, but it's a very important job. And it was very condescending. Maybe they did that too. It's like, it, I know you're just yeah. wiping the king's butt, but yeah. hey, the he's chosen of God. Stool. <laughs> of the stool. <laughs> Why is it way worse in a British accent? <laughs> As it was anyway, intended. so this courtier, it became uh, feared and respected for the amount. <laughs> feared and respected. We're not. Like we're, not gonna, uh, we're not going to. We're not going to about make the it secret this. information that they would learn. <laughs> Royal secrets. Was was this getting weaponized? Like, is that something that you could sell to the king of France? Like, you know, hey, king, that. whatever. Philip's got the runs. So you can go ahead and attack now, or what? Well, for um, real though, like, what did they do? But would you like to know feel, the best part? Yes. Yeah. I so, feel like you're, you're, you're stringing us along. Yeah, you're holding back. So the office did change uh, this this appointment gradually over the decades uh, and centuries into one of administration of the royal finances under Henry what? VII. The groom of the stool became a powerful <laughs> official involved in setting national fiscal policy under Guess what? What? The chamber system. <laughs> okay, wait. So this guy's chamber wiping. Pie. Come on. I got it. Oh, it's great. It's all like poop jokes. It's great. Oh, I'm not following. Is this <laughs> no, for wait, real wait, or that's a joke? That's for that's real. That's actually where it comes so from? Wait, the board chamber pot? Co- oh, my God. No, no, no. I don't know if chamber pot comes from that. It probably oh, well, actually, does. Yeah, it does. It totally does. Um, so wait, this happened under Henry the Seventh. So this was like uh-huh. 1400s when they started uh-huh. doing this. Uh huh. Okay. And then, it and then yeah. before um, that, who wiped the king? No one in a position Nobody. of power. Well, just yeah. the boyfriend of the stool. He wasn't quite a groom yet. He hadn't committed. Right? Oh, <laughs> just a little side piece. <laughs> well, the side, side piece, piece of, of the stool. <laughs> the side piece of the stool. <laughs> the mistress. No, that doesn't. Mean. 
No. No, no, because we'll get boy. to ladies. Hold so up. what are we okay, even? Okay, what is this time. of the stool? Continue, yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so later, in the Tudor era, because we've had some queens in our time, mm-hmm. uh, the groom of the stool position involved into the first lady of the bedchamber. Oh, that's okay. so much nicer. <laughs> first held in 1558 to Uh, Elizabeth I by someone named Kate Ashley or Cat Ashley. Oh. Mary Uh, Kate and Ashley Olsen's descendants. (laughs) Right. Mary Kate and Ashley wiped Queen Elizabeth I. Yeah. That was one of their like their twin movies that they did after they left Full House, right? Or they travel back in time. They go back in time and they are (laughs) The two of them are like this back to back. (laughs) That's why the haunted look. Yeah, they're they're deep haunted, and then they're like, yeah. yeah. We, we, in order to get a good husband, we had to be part of the quick queen's court, you know. Anyway, that's the only way they could them. get back to the t- present time. Yeah, I'm sorry. Continue to, to marry well. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> but sadly, after only one year, the office oh. effectively came to an end when it was neutralized in 1559. I mean, I really wish what that the, went Wiki- down? the Wikipedia article had gone just a touch further and used evacuated because that would have been yeah that would have been way better neutralized sounds like someone got put down murder <laughs> yeah like, I was like, what you do to like a rival direction direction did you go yeah <laughs> yeah did you just so why did it go someone? away it just it just did um i think there's something worry, there, some drama it was revived oh good yes in uh in 1726 under the Hanoverians, the groom of the stool began to be named in the London Gazette. John Chamberlain oh. wrote that while Lord Chamberlain has oversight of all the officers belonging to the king's chamber, the precinct of the king's bedchamber is wholly under the groom of the stool. So he's in charge? He's just so in, he's charge in charge of the king. <laughs> and now called the gentleman of the bedchamber. Uh, okay. Which really, as I'm reading this, is just more like a valet. Sounds so. Hot. That sounds more like a lover, honestly. The gentleman uh, yeah. of the bedchamber. Sounds sexy. It really does. Just sounds like the dude you're banging. Yeah. Says oh, uh, over your, the Hanoverians the weren't banging. They were not banging. I don't know anything that, about them. I know. I'm being an idiot. <laughs> Please move you're on. Not. <laughs> they that that just... goes to me. I'll take the hit. But anyway, yeah. so they brought it back. They brought it back um, to gentlemen of the bedchamber. Ooh, resume. And uh, by 1740, the groom of the stool, oh, the stole. Oh, that's right. It changed. The stole? To not stole. make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Now he was stealing from the chamber. Right, because so, they had care of the entire king's wardrobe. And I guess Wardrobe he stole and it. butthole together. Here's, that's a lot of responsibility. This is where the finance thing comes in because they would call the king's wardrobe part of his, like, okay. oh, where are you going to get there? All right. I did a whole tab on someone robbing the king's wardrobe. Oh no 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 no! I was I was into it. Go for it. Oh, no, just, no. that's what there, it means. Like his personal jewelry and clothes oh. and, and poop. apparently chamber pot. Yeah, yeah, chamber pot. That's right. Chamber finance. Were chamber. were these people like at all like medically trained? Like was this sort of like a GI of its day as well, or is it literally just in charge of like ass wiping? <laughs> just <wiping>? the dude. <laughs> yeah. Was there any like, Lord, perhaps you should engage in more fiber or no, there's nothing that. <laughs> yeah, it, it just seemed to be uh, held by a random Anyone. courtier. Yeah. Um, wow. So in uh, the My Lady Jane show, it ends up happening to uh, Jane's mother as a punishment um, oh. to assist uh, Queen Mary as groom oh. of the stool. Um, and I was just like, hold up, what is this? Um, no, 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 no this to... can't be real. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's real. That's a real thing. Well, if you think uh, about it, they're wearing, like, huge changed. dresses, and, like, it's probably hard oh, yeah. to go to the bathroom. Oh, that's a well, good point. I didn't even thought of, of that. We yeah. chairs that had a hole yeah. in it. Like, even when I was getting married, I remember being like, I guess I'm on my own. I have to try to figure out how to go to the bathroom in yeah. this dress. And it was, like, yeah. just, like, hiking it up. I would have loved to have a groom of the stool. Yeah. That's, you know, I've heard of that being a thing on the wedding days. Maybe I have honor. luckily no in here. in-depth experience of that. I can get remarried. That's why so I can, can smile do again. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, so the final cut, <laughs> the final cut in 1901, 
uh, when Edward ascended, uh, acceded to the throne as King, King Edward, Edward the Seventh in 1901, the... he discontinued the office of the Groom of the Stool. So Victoria Another used it up until she died. That, yeah, Edward pretty the much. Seventh's not the Nazi. Edward the Eighth is the oh, Nazi. Who... Oh, and... I'm sorry. <laughs> I see that. Like, what I'm... was Edward the Seventh's deal? He was just a dude. Yeah. He's just a dude who didn't like yeah. the stool, the Groom of the Stool. Yeah, I guess not. I guess he was like, "Don't touch me." Yeah, pretty much. I can, I can I understand know. that. I would be deeply uncomfortable with a groom of the stool. Like, don't just touch for the record. me. Yeah, but, I got my truly, bidet. That's all I need. Prince That's Albert your groom of the and stool. Your son. That is my groom of the stool. I'm going to start calling it that when I go to the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. Wait, Prince Albert, what? Oh yeah. Oh, Prince Albert and uh, and their son. So Queen Victoria, Prince Albert, mm-hmm. and their son Edward, Prince of Wales, employed similar courtiers. Like they they oh. all used them. Hmm. Her. Mm-hmm. But when Edward well, uh, became king, it was like, he's like, no I'm more. done with this. He was the one that they thought was uh, Jack, not Jack the Ripper, but um, Edward VII was one of the ones they were like, he may have been Jack oh. the Ripper because he I would just go that. bang people down in White, yeah. Cat, White, 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 what? Whitehall? No, White Whitechapel. Chapel. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I'm um, loading my knowledge just, on you. Dumb huh? stuff. This is no, the no, wrong no. place for that, Hannah. Yeah, I just, I just heard um, <laughs> someone saying that a popular theory about Jack the Ripper is it's Edgar Degas. I've the heard, heard that, that too, too, but yeah, I haven't. I didn't look very hard into it, but he was insane. But I don't yeah. know. But uh, for, I for all it. the fans uh, following, yeah, it was part um, of it. Yeah, uh, there is a list of all the grooms of the stool on the Wikipedia oh article. My gosh. Mm. Oh my are there God. a lot? Actually, yeah, oh, there's hundreds. Tons. I'm sure. Okay. Tons. Hundreds. I don't know, probably like 50. I'm... I wonder I if there's one up. who lived through like multiple different kings. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Well, That'd that wasn't like, too to hard to do. In what some was that of, movie? Some of the time. The, the White House one? Is it the, is it the butler? What am I thinking of? Where he's the butler, like, he's the butler for like a bunch of different presidents. Oh, yeah. I think it's yeah. called. Mm. It's the butler, right? I don't know. I'm confusing it. Anyway, but that, but for the, but you should call it the groom of the stool, and you get to see like the history of England through the perspective of this guy who cleaned buttholes of every different king that went yeah, through. Yeah, that would be perfect. <laughs> I think that's an Academy Award winner right there. Yep. <laughs> oh, Winston Churchill's ancestor was one of them. He was what? one. Oh no, sorry. Oh, his ancestor. Yeah, Sarah uh, Churchill. Malta. Yalta, not Malta. <laughs> Yalt. Yeah, he was over there. Just yeah. Yeah. Now, He's now helping I'm out Churchill. This list. Listen, Churchill, he, he was having a tough time there. As deep as the groom of the stool, Hannah. Yeah. I'm deep. I'm deep. I'm as deep as the groom of the stool right now. Wow. So lots of by, people. So, sorry, tell me again. What year is it officially that it goes away? 1901. 1901. So we haven't had one for 123 years on the record officially. Is it? Off the record. I don't Off. That's what I'm saying. Off the record, I think there's different ones. And there was just one different names. on record before the Tudor monarchy. Oh. 1455, oh, yeah. William oh, Grimsby was yeoman Grimsby. of the stool. <laughs> yeoman, yeoman of the stool. <laughs> yeoman of the stool. <laughs> Bill Grimsby. <laughs> Billy Grimsby. <laughs> yeoman of the stool Who has had MP? enough. Hold on, I he almost can... read that as MVP. Most MVP valuable player of butthole cleaning. <laughs> It just sounds like now it's an 80s. Bill Yeoman has had enough of your shit. So he decided <laughs> to do something about it. And he's just oh him just killing the king. Is that what he's going to do? It turns into like a like a Quentin Tarantino like bloodbath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd watch that. He's, spraying, he's got water guns. Are there. <laughs> Amazing oh, imagery. Um, cool. Uh, is there oh, anything else awesome. you want to say about that? Mm, me? No. Yeah. yeah. No. Not that, that I that's know. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. Thanks for All sharing. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I wonder Thank if that's where sharing. the word stool comes from. I have to look that up Groom now. Of the stool. Mm, okay. I mean, like, maybe they were having to sit on a stool next to the monarch. <laughs> I'm just like, I, I mean, yeah. Wait. Weird. And then, of course, the double entendre. Look up the of of the word stool. stool. Sitting okay, on the stool, so yeah. waiting for the stool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting deeply into that this. That seems like a very polite euphemism for like you're sitting on the stool and waiting on the that's stool. That's like the word that you use, yeah. 
Waiting for the stool see. bus. Waiting for the stool bus. That's a good one. Stool bus. All aboard the stool bus. <laughs> I need to get out of this. I can't keep reading my stool. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Oh, yeah, it's just called stool because it, it, that's what they called the thing you sit on anyway. And it looks kind of like mm-hmm. a throne. Yeah. Like, yeah, makes sense. stool was his throne, and then mm-hmm. he also had one to... Anyway. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he had the alternate version cool. with a hole in it. Beautiful. Thank you. Kavi, are you next or am I? It's up to you. Whatever you'd like. Do you want to go I first or should I go? I don't remember did it last. It uh, doesn't matter. I'll go. Are you excited to go? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, you Alex. Got? That was enlightening um, in welcome. a beautiful way. Okay. So, Alex, Kave, as you well know, Kave, I love the yeah. Wikipedia list. That's the list you of do. longest living organisms. I always like to totally. find out who, what's lived the longest, hence Jonathan the tortoise. And right. uh, oh, yes, old trees. And, and one of these, I was like, well, what's the longest lived cat? Since I tend to like cats, and oh. I found I found out that the longest cat people cat... coming out October eighth. October eighth, <laughs> you can buy it anywhere books are sold. Uh, oh my god! Get a free tote bag. Free tote bag. <laughs> you know the oh. drill. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Trying to make uh, my friends money. <laughs> it's working. Yeah. Also by mom. Sorry, mom I de- have... but I derailed your podcast by trying to pimp your book. I don't care. I don't care. Buy your book. Okay. Buy your book. Damn it. <laughs> Sorry, oldest yeah, living it. cat. Anyway, yeah. the oldest living cat was a cat named Cream Puff. And Cream Puff lived from 1967 until 2008. Whoa. This cat took, Whoa. This cat lived 38 years and three days, which is wow. double the amount of the average oh. lifespan of a cat. So My this God. is roughly 168 human years. So like... <laughs> Shouldn't have lived this long, right? So I was like, oh, oh, that cat's ancient. How did that? And it was like pretty healthy. And so I started looking through the list of like oldest cats and I see a few other ones and then I noticed something. All these cats are owned by the same person. Really? And it was this, yes. A lot of these Guinness World Record holder old cats are all owned or were all owned by the same person named Jake Perry. Jake now, Perry. I'm going to. I'm going to talk about Jake Perry and his insane ancient menagerie of cats because this dude, I don't know what he, he, he has a reason. He's like, here's, here's why they live long, but I'm going to get into it. So okay. before I even answer why Cream Puff lived to be forever, to, to be old like that, he, you got to know that he was born in 1967, the middle mm-hmm. of the summer. And shortly after he was taken in by a local plumber and family man, Jake Perry. So Jake Perry is now in his 90s, but at the time he was like raising kids. He was uh, he was like described as one of the nicest guys around, loved cats, loved animals, um, was a single parent. So he was like really going, going for Real it. Real good doing... dude. Real Did good you say dude. where this was, by the way? No, I will, though. It's okay. in Austin, Texas. Right. Okay. So he was described by the Austin Chronicle as the, quote, best retired plumber with some names to, claims to fame, who, unlike his cousin, Texas Governor Rick Perry... He is well known and well liked. Oh, <laughs> so, oh. yes, <laughs> this is Rick Perry's oh. cousin. <laughs> wow, cat lover, and, uh, mm, cat, cat people oh. for the win. <laughs> Absolutely, and everyone loved him, and they all hated his cousin. Yeah. Come on. So I don't know how like in contact with each other they were, but they were cousins, first cousins. So he's been uh, the eighties come around, and he starts adopting like hundreds of cats, and he kind of becomes like this um. <laughs> It's all that 80s cocaine. Yeah, it's just the, cocaine, the stock market's the blowing energy. up. Just cocaine, <laughs> Reaganomics, Cat. city oh, on a hill, blow. Cats. Just blow. Just, it's like endless lines, you know? Yeah. Cats yeah. doing it. Like cats uh, trying to paw it. Cat, yeah, pawing it around. <laughs> oh, Gumming it. Wild. <laughs> Licking it up. Okay. So, yeah, 80s, he starts kind of being his own, like, I wouldn't say shelter, but kind of. He'd go to these shelters okay. and be like, okay, there's some cats on the list. Of, you know, they're going to kill these cats after a week. And he'd wait and wait and wait till the very last minute, make sure they wouldn't get adopted. And then he'd take all of them home and he would take care of them and then rehome them. Okay. So okay. at one point, overall, 500 or more cats went through his care. <gasps> and at one point- 500 open fi- cats. 500 open cats. <laughs> open. Oh, no. Maybe not open, but 500 Actually, adopted cats. We'll get to the open part because there is a part. Yeah. 
guys, this goes, this gets crazy. You have to Rick consume the flesh of other cats. That's how they and lived for 38 like, years. Groom of the stool yeah. already. <laughs> oh, <laughs> plumber. This is the modern day groom of the stool, except he's a groom of the stool to the, the common folk. Mm. Uh, anyway, so Jake is like cat machine, right? Just like churning out healthy cats and getting them adopted. And um, some were like show cats. He was like, I'm going to get, you know, he had like sphinxes that he would, it would win shows. Are you dancing? I'm doing my cat show dance. <laughs> Hello, I'm in a cat show. Um, Hi, cat walk. I'm the groom of the stool. <laughs> um, <laughs> gross. It always ends up about poop. That's the thing. We do these. <laughs> What's this? I'm going in a backward motion. Oh, you're motion. wiping. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like you're doing. It looks like you're wiping. Oh, we're gross. Okay, so. So some of these cats were his own. Some of them were show cats. And uh, in 1999, one of his cats named Grandpa uh, was Good name. was said to be the oldest living cat. And it made, he made it into the Grunus Book of World Records. And Grandpa died at age 34. And dude, Grandpa mm. was his favorite. He sent birthday invitations to Grandpa's birthday to um. Bill Clinton, to like the governor. And people did would come to this Did socks go at least? <laughs> no. <laughs> socks did not show his face. Come. Stuck up. But Bill Clinton sent a letter saying, I'm sorry, I can't attend Grandpa's party. With best wishes. Grandpa died later that year, so maybe that was the... Out of heartbreak. The catalyst. <laughs> yeah, the, the catalyst, catalyst for his... But yeah, Grandpa... It... Anyway, so here's, here's the crazy thing. Jake claims at least a third of the cats that go through his, his home live to be over 25 which is Damn. unbelievable. And he, and here's how. Here's how. He gave an interview and he's like, here's how you get. This guy's so cool. He's like this slow talking, like Texan, working class, awesome dude. And he says it's all about diet, environment, sure. and mm-hmm. love. And yeah. the diet is regular old cheap, like store, dried store cat food, right? Just the stuff you buy on like shelves. But mm-hmm. the key is, is giving them eggs turkey bacon broccoli and a little bit of coffee every day so he would caffeinate he would caffeinate these cats and then every few days he would give them each an eyedropper full of red wine to circulate the arteries so he's between coffee and a little bit of red wine makes sense actually it does and it's funny because like veterinarians are like we absolutely don't recommend you give your cat alcohol or caffeine (laughs) Like but. It, there's literally no studies proving other that, that it works, and so he his veterinarian was like, I don't know what this guy does, but I mean, listen, veterinarians, working. what like twenty years old? This guy, like consistent record right. of twenty five and thirty eight year old cats. I'm gonna go with yeah. the plumber. Thank you very Man. much. I'm going to too. Anyway, another thing that might help with their longevity is this environment he makes so this dude has Mm -hmm. converted his entire house to these cats so there's like hamster tubes that are the size for cats like going through every room so these cats have like full run of the house they have like a jungle gym they the whole house is converted to just their happiness and then in one room he converted his garage into a theater with chairs and lights and he puts nature documentaries on, and all the cats just come in and watch them like oh. humans. <laughs> Isn't that cute? That's really cute. So, like David this, Attenborough this little shit. Little Texan, yes. This little old Texan man is like, "Time for your movies," and puts on like bird chirping, and all the cats are like, "Yeah." He also has a catio, and he has a train mm-hmm. that he has going around the house for the cats. A to catio, play a cat train, a catio, a cat patio. You don't. Oh. You Have you never idiot. heard of Catio Kave? <laughs> no, he hasn't. He doesn't like cats. This is the first time I've heard of it. <laughs> oh. Just kidding. He likes cats. Um, I'm fine with cats. I know. I'm just being, a, I'm I'm being an idiot. Oh. Neutralized. Um, so they had an outdoor enclosure. <laughs> <laughs> I had some connections in my head. Uh, That's good. And his, na- his neighbors describe him as his home as a cat playground. And so just... Just picture a house just swarming with cats, and that's how you get your cats to live old. Does he does uh, he drive them around in a anymore? Cadillac? Oh my, he should Cadillac. And then also he says that he has individual, uh, very close relationships with each cat. So he pays individual attention to all of them, built relationships, and celebrates their birthdays. And he's like, I think that's why 
they love to live so long because I celebrate their birthdays. And I'm like, I think they're cats, but whatever. Yeah. That's fine, Jake. Famously, cats um, love birthdays. Yeah. He buys them hats. He buys them gifts. He dresses them up. And at Christmas, he has the train for them to ride on, and they like riding on it. So this is just a cat circus in this little Texas yeah. house. And his longtime veterinarian is pretty much just in awe. He's been treating his cats for years, and he just sort of shrugs, and he's like, yeah, I guess he is a magic cat man. And uh, <laughs> he says most of Perry's cats live to be at least 25, but admits it's impossible to know their exact ages, saying, quote, unquote, it's not like you can cut them open and count the rings. Like a That's tree. That's the joke I always make: is cutting off cutting someone's open. foot, and that way you can see all like, the rings really? on the inside of the bone. Yeah, I'm feeling concerned. I'm feeling concerned. This where is this that, is headed, dude. Oh, so here's where it does get a little morbid. Mm. Um, like all animals, they die before we do, and so Jake Perry has had to to bury a lot of cats. <laughs> oh, he just buried uh, a lot of them. Yeah, but he oh, does have. Don't worry, he has a pet cemetery in his backyard, yep. and yep. it is manicured and beautiful. And the, the tombstones are made from, like, he gets them made. And um, he commissions uh, baby coffins to be made uh, for each of the dead cats. So he will he will buy a baby coffin, have a full-blown funeral. That other cats cat- go to, I assume. Yes. There's a wake. Did he get them all dressed leave- up in, like, black suits and ties and stuff? I don't know. I hope so. so it seems so like something he would wake. do. Probably does. The cat I saw that was in one of the baby caskets uh, did have some, like, beautiful, like, ruffles and stuff. Um, That's nice. And he has the full ceremony for these cats. And he, all the, he lets all the cats come up and sniff them. It's like a, it's a wake. And then he has made it clear that when he dies, he wants to be buried in that pet cemetery with his beloved cats. Mm. Um, well, speaking of death, nowadays he does not in- adopt any more cats because he's, like, 95 this dude is like gonna live forever, and he's not adopting more. Hopefully. He just has one more cat left, and that cat's only name one. Is called... One more cat left, and its name is Jean Claude Van Damme. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Jean um, Claude. Claude exactly. Van Damme. I love it. <laughs> now, a couple of the cats' names that I particularly liked were uh, Cowboy, um, Jimmy Carter, the cat, uh, <laughs> and Buffy the Vampire. That's it. Buffy the what, Vampire. There's no Richard Nixon Not named Slayer? cats? What Not is this Buffy? shit? I, I bet they should have. Right. No Slayer, just Buffy Dick the Nixon Vampire. Dick Nixon erasure. Just Buffy the Vampire. Um, just just yeah. fan fiction twist. Like. Yes. Like, it's like he heard the name of the sh- He heard the name of the show and he was like, that sounds good. <laughs> but uh, then there was another cat I'm... named Slayer who would always like be next to Buffy Fight the Vampire. Buffy. Yep. And then it was, it was just a one two cat show. <laughs> The article, I forgot to say the article, is called How to Raise a 165-Year-Old Cat by Christina Couch. And in the article, Christina is talking about how she meets this guy because he's her plumber. And (laughs) he comes over and he's like talking about how his cats live forever. And she's like, who is this crazy dude? Who's this crazy guy? And he's like, yeah, I got a home theater for them and kind of telling her everything. And she was like, huh? And finally he shows her pictures and she's like, I got to do an article on him. But then he just ghosts her for like years no apparently he had like cancer and he was like sorry about that i had cancer i thought he was like i don't trust the media or something right well she went and poked around his house and she's like asked his neighbors and stuff anyway reporter stuff finally he granted her an interview and he sent her he let her take pictures of all of these different cats let me show you i'm gonna send you a few photos okay so here is jake i love him so much jake is wholesome oh did he's, it go through? Uh, he's wearing like a camo hat. He's wearing yeah. like a plaid short sleeve shirt that you would get at like Mervyn's. I don't think Mervyn's. Yeah. Is Mervyn's? Mervyn's. Mervyn's. No. Mervyn's? no. Mervyn's? <laughs> it's I don't not know what around. Mervyn's is now. Uh, uh, Kohl's, I guess. Kohl's is probably. Yeah. yeah. And then he's just he's just wearing some like, I'm assuming Levi's. Wrangler jeans. It's some, yeah. You know, Dillard's, you know. He's a working yeah. man. And he's got the most gnarly. His sunglasses hands. are intense, though. Yeah. Here is oh. Cream Puff. Oh. And he would do these full blown like JC Penny photo shoots with these cats, like yeah. posing them. And go baskets. get his plaid shirt. And then and he'd go get a cat. Get his portrait. plaid shirt. Exactly. And uh this there's like something cream someone puff. would buy at a convention too. Oh, a hundred percent. This dude would have loved CatCon. Oh, he would oh, have yeah. had a great um, time. And this here he is with grandpa. 
Uh, Grandpa is like this no. ancient looking sphinx cat. <laughs> like, uh, oh. I just love these photos because you see his gnarled old hands holding these yeah. beautifully posed cat oh. photos. And here he is with Cowboy and Jimmy Carter. Um, they're both also sphinxes. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so he's very proud of all these cats. And he's he's got, don't worry, he's got a pet cemetery. And he wants, one of his dreams is to actually open a pet cemetery for other people to bury their animals. And offer the services of the baby caskets. I can't say the word baby casket without feeling kind of icky, but... Um, I, I wonder uh, what that process is. Like, does he have to go to the city and just be like, I want my home to become like a monument of some sort or like a, I don't know. a protected building? Because it's got, you said it's all customized for cat stuff. Yeah. You can just donate um, it to the city and then have that be part of the cemetery, I guess. There's probably some make sort it of into easier, like a not easy, cat but cafe. legal process. A cat but, cafe. It's interesting. Yeah. I don't even know yeah. if he's alive. I tried checking, but I don't think he's, I didn't find an obituary, but yeah. it should he's be about 95 now. <laughs> Also, like, thing. I, oh, sorry, I don't know if you no, can be no, buried please. in your own backyard. Like, it depends do the, on the, the municipality. Yeah, because yeah. there are. I, I thought this places. was America last time. I checked. have, <laughs> <laughs> I have, be- because my dad used to oh. make the joke when when we didn't have health insurance, he'd be like, "Don't get sick, or else you're gonna get buried in the backyard." We don't have health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it sounds dark, but we all thought it was funny. No, yeah, no, I get it's like, we can't afford a funeral. Let's we'll just go back to the backyard. Yeah. And I looked yeah. it up. Also, once, I'm like, so like, why own I? a home? Like, if I can't even bury my, like, I'm gonna pay right. more money to get buried somewhere right. else. What the shit is my backyard for? They're Interesting. Because I was thinking anyway. about all these cat funerals. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. I think he raises that's money intense. for the funerals. But yeah. that's Jake Perry, Rick Perry's uh, way better cousin. Yeah, way who cooler. is the cat daddy of all? You know, cat daddy. Yeah. Wow. I feel like I just talked straight through that without letting you guys talk at all. No, My not apologies. at all. I, you know, I was just proud of you uh, for how succinct, <laughs> succinctly you were able to uh, go through that article, unlike me. So, Oh, it's hard. It's I wasn't like this. It's taken a lot of practice. Yeah. You were both excellent. And the whole point of this show is to get your a la carte Have experience fun. of different styles of storytelling. Mm-hmm. Hello, friends. If you're like Hannah and I, you feel deeply uncomfortable asking for help. But as my therapist always tells me, your insurance has been declined. Please stop coming to my yoga class and crying. While I'm sorting all that out, you can go to nebula.tv slash 500 open tabs and sign up for Nebula and help us get our lives back on track. Even better, Nebula has exclusives like identities. Two strangers appear in a mysterious room with no way out and no memory of who they are. Identities is a sci-fi thriller directed by Jesse Earle and starring some friends of mine, like Maggie Mayfish and Abigail Thorne, as well as, and perhaps the most exciting for me, John Delancey, a.k.a. Q, from Star Trek. Big deal. I had the pleasure of attending the premiere a few weeks back, and I can say for certain that this movie is a corking good time. You can find this video and dozens of other high-production originals on Nebula, a video streaming platform built by and for creators. And of course, I'm contractually obligated to tell you that subscribers get a special feed to listen to this show ad-free. Go to nebula.tv slash 500 open tabs and get 40% off an annual subscription. By signing up, you can support other creators like Lindsay Ellis, Princess Weeks, and many more. Remember, sign up at nebula.tv slash 500 open tabs and help my therapist enjoy their yoga class without having to hear me weep. Okay, what Um, do you have for us? Yeah. uh, Well, thank you for being the cat daddy of this podcast. Um, You're welcome. I'm just going to go back to being the regular non-cat daddy as much as I can. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so... (laughs) You're more like a whale daddy. By the time daddy, this airs, you love whales. Whale Go daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you always end up talking about whales or like. This is animal. not about whales, actually, for oh, once. Or sharks. What? No sharks. Wait, no animals. It's about this stool, one. right? It's about <laughs> captain of stool. <laughs> captain. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Groom of the stool. So I'm the stool like captain, captain of this podcast. I'm gonna get a hat. I'm gonna get like one of those sailors' yeah. hat that says. Captain of stool, stool captain. Uh, or stool captain. Anyway, I'm going to letter in stooling. That's like, you know, when you're in varsity jackets. <laughs> oh, yeah. I lettered a giant in S. theater. I'm lettered in stool. Uh, 24. Yay. Anyway, <laughs> so 
My tap. So by the time this airs, the Olympics will have been over, but they've been on my home nonstop because Sarah just loves to watch them and yeah. uh, she doesn't stop. And uh, sure, it's cool. We all played some sports as kids and maybe even a little bit in high school, but clearly nothing. Alex note, is shaking right? your head. No, <laughs> not even. Did, did you play any sports? Oh, I did kendo in college. Oh, that counts. Uh, oh, okay. Which, if yeah. you're not familiar, is a Japanese sword fighting sport. Um, yeah, that's cool. That's a huge flex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did a little league, like little like soccer and baseball. I played in no, like kendo. two softball games of a friend yeah, yeah. who needed someone and I was like, Oh, this is not for me. No. We're not we're not here to compete. But fun fact, I did play with someone who went on to be an Olympian. Oh You did? Yeah, and by played with, I mean I warmed the bench for. Oh. <laughs> and by sport? warmed the bench for, I mean I was actually in the overflow area away from the bench warmers because I was basically on the team in case a tragic event killed the first, second, and third <laughs> string players. <laughs> so the groom of, the groom of, the groom of the stool. Listen, yeah. <laughs> joke's on them because I graduated and went to an art school no one's ever heard of and I started a very mid-podcast. So who's laughing now? Clearly not our audience. All uh, 150 people who listen to this, <laughs> they're laughing. There's more um, than that. I did, I did play with, um, his name was Peter Varelis. He went on to Stanford and then he went to play in the Olympics as a water polo player. He's a lefty. Good guy. As a what player? Very talented. Volleyball? Lefty, which in water polo, if you're a lefty, oh, water that's polo, an asset. That's right. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Good right? job, That's Peter. my connection to the Olympics. Yeah. Not whales, anyway, so still water. <laughs> that's true. It's still aquatic. <laughs> so yep. it, it's cool to be an artist, but frankly, we will never achieve glory in the same way. And I will never be able to spit in the face of England as I stand on a higher platform than them and hold my fist in the air with a gold medal around my neck for drawing a funny, insane cartoon that minimizes 9-11 to a tasteless punchline. <laughs> at least, at least not today. Oh, but. For a moment in time, I could have. What? That's right. Today, I'm going to talk about a brief period where one could win an Olympic medal for art. What? Uh, I briefly, okay. Tell me all about it. Do you guys know about this? Yeah. So from 1912 to 1948, gold, silver, and bronze medals were handed out in Olympic art competitions across five categories. Architecture literature, music, painting, and sculpture. Whoa. This set of awards was named the Pentathlon of the Muses with its winners decided by an international jury. This is true. That's awesome. Because that's all right? very Greek anyway, because the Greeks were like, we like art. They sound yeah. just like that. So, it's exactly right. So all entries were required to be original and sport themed. Uh, artists could also submit multiple works, meaning they could chalk up more than one win in a competition. And what? over its 38-year run, the juries uh, awarded a total of 151 medals to original works in the fine arts inspired by athletic endeavors. This story goes back to our boy, Hannah Pierre de Coubertin, from episode uh-huh. 21 of this podcast, yeah. which was Marathon the Moon. The one that, like, what did he do? Oh, he was, uh, he, he was, like, instrumental in getting the Olympics to be in Chicago. No, right? he was, like, the dude. He, like, created oh, he the Olympics. He brought the he Olympics brought back. back. Yeah. He's the main guy. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> Episode 21. Go listen to that if you haven't. Pierre it's a fun de, de one. Coubertin. Famously against so, racism. So we have against that. Against racism. To... Good for him. Founder of the modern Olympic Games. Apparently saw art competitions as integral to his vision as well. Because to him, what it meant to be a true Olympian was someone who was not only athletic, but also skilled uh-huh. in music and literature. Much like you said. Yes. Initially, he struggled to convince overextended local organizers of the first few Olympic Games in Athens, St. Louis, and Paris oh, that St. art Louis. competitions were necessary, but they didn't budge. But he remained adamant. Quote, there is only one difference between our Olympiads and plain sporting championships, and it is precisely the contests of art as they existed in the Olympiads of ancient Greece, where sport exhibitions walked in equality with artistic exhibitions. Wait, really? They would do them back That's in the what day? He said? Mm. I don't know. According to this guy. According to this Yahoo. He brought it back. One dude. You know. He can see whatever he wants. <laughs> Listen, I, I didn't start the Olympics, so I can't say anything that cool. I think and you I'm should bring back the art Olympics. Up. I think so too. 
Fortunately, oh, it gets great. Fortunately, by the time the 1912 games in Stockholm rolled around, he was able to complete his vision with one caveat. Every work had to be somehow inspired by the concept of sport. So oh. musical compositions, which glorified a sporting ideal in athletic competition or an athlete, or which were intended for presentations in connection with sporting festivals, would be considered so long as they didn't exceed the one-hour time allotment. Meanwhile, in literature, a 20,000-word limit was placed on a category divided into dramatic works, lyrical works, and epic poetry. All you could true. Like, a, like a huge, long, epic poem and win a gold medal. Exactly. In this theory. is cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're probably all wondering, right? Like, what the shit? How come I never even heard of this? Yeah. Yeah. Did Picasso yeah. win a bunch of like medals and just throw them in the garbage? I mean, I did, would. Yeah. Did famed vaginal painter Georgia O'Keeffe have a flower garden littered with Olympic gold? <laughs> famed vaginal painter. <laughs> I mean, that's what they are. Well, the answer isn't some wild conspiracy like you might think, but it is dumb. Apparently. It's dumb? You couldn't. Yeah, it's dumb. You couldn't be a professional artist in order to compete. <laughs> Wait. What? What? Boo! Are you kidding? Yes. So, <laughs> yep. In a hysterical irony by today's standards, apparently at one point in the Olympics, didn't want a shit ton of money to influence the outcome of who won medals. Oh, because artists make a lot of money. Professional artists are out there with tons of money. <laughs> so, so Alex, go. Pierre. <laughs> yeah, say it. Say it. Oh no, I'm just like still confused. Like how? How? How money? Yeah, I don't know. I think most people were confused, which you'll learn throughout the course of this tab. People were like, well, "This none of this makes sense. This is what happens when you have an, when you have a category for a bunch of artists." Right. It's disorganized at best. So Edward Hopper couldn't just slide into yeah. competing against someone who submitted a self portrait they did in a paint and wine night. <laughs> you had to only have paint and wine night paintings because they were oh, amateurs. Oh no! Oh, if I had to go to a paint and wine paint or judging competition, I would leave. <laughs> I so I went leave. to one of those classes once. Tell us about oh. it. <laughs> I was the asshole who brought her own paintbrushes. <laughs> I would. I, I don't want to use like, theirs. I was like, if I gotta like use their their shitty temper paints, then uh, oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring my own brushes, and it and it worked yeah. out. It worked out for me. Um, mm. What did you paint? I koi yeah. fish. Do you have koi it? fish? Maybe somewhere. I think it's in the somewhere. garage. I see. Nowhere close by. Nowhere close curious. by. I've always wondered what those are like. I'm like, I'm not like bashing on them. Like, they're no, for no, people no. who have fun. But, uh, but I did fun? get offered a, a teaching job to do them. <laughs> you <laughs> did? That's awesome. Oh, no. Did. did you do it? No. <laughs> they're like, they're like, you can hold a paintbrush. How about you come yeah. here and do this? Yeah. Kind of like, have you ever thought about teaching classes? Like, have you ever thought about <laughs> like, you know, do you want a job? And I was like, oh, I have a job. As a professional artist yeah. do they give you do they give you like a prompt how does it work the artist hosting the class like did the painting um and has like a final one there and then they grab a blank canvas and then they they start it anew and and show you how to step by step basically do it oh i see yeah. it's not like a, everybody paint whatever they want it's yeah like you have to draw one specific thing you have no to you do have to copy. draw the one specific thing yeah i didn't know that well, that, I see, I see. Uh, nothing is worse. That sounds horrible. It sounds like a prison. <laughs> it's fine. I'm glad people enjoy it, and that is why it's there. Okay? Listen, some people respond to structure because they don't know. It's too overwhelming to start with. Uh, and so it's good no, for I'm a little glad. guidance. Yeah. Chaos. That's what um, I'm saying. I'm just yes. saying for me, Oof. and I'm glad there's paint nights. Uh, and of course... This being an art competition for art people, no one was like super good at keeping track of anything or like <laughs> archiving stuff. Yeah. And so there's not a whole lot of available availability <laughs> in terms of like historic record. That's right. I love that it's just lost to history simply because <laughs> a bunch of artists did it. <laughs> except, except for, you guessed it. Oh, no. The Nazis. The Nazis. Oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> How did I know? The 19, what, 44 Olympics was it? Or 38 or something? 38. At the opening of the 1936 Olympic art competition, pencil dick urethra sniffer and minister of propaganda, Joseph Goebbels. (laughs) He's such a piece of crap. That dude's the worst. They're all bad. 
<laughs> he reminded his audience that each <laughs> good use it in your <laughs> Olympic competition for art. Yep. <laughs> uh, he reminded the audience that each work entered in the competition was required to have been created within the last four years. And this restriction, he declared, enables us to derive from the exhibition an estimate of international conditions. Basically, he was like, yo, Ugh. Nazi crew, mount up and make some epic Nazi paintings and shit so the world knows that oh. we're absolute human garbage. <laughs> Man. Oh, they always, they ruin literally everything. Everything. Um, yeah, we can't tell a home- story without them getting their d- d- dumb little fingers in it. It's true. And uh, home field fingers. advantage worked great for Germany that year. The international jury consisted of 29 German judges and 12 from other European countries. So awesome. more than double. German artists who won five of the nine gold medals awarded that year. By contrast, their combined gold medal count from the 28 and 32 Summer Olympics had come to a grand total of one. Whoa. Um, so they sucked mm-hmm. balls. Holy German musicians. <laughs> they suck like balls. Also swept the musical composition for solo and chorus category. A pair of German brothers called Werner and Walter March took home mm. gold in architecture for their design Reich, Reich Sportfield. The mm. latter was based on the Olympiastadion, Olympiastadion, an original structure designed by Werner that had been built to scale right there in Berlin over the course of the previous two years. It was currently housing the Olympics competition in handball, equestrian, soccer, track and field, and is in fact still in use today. They, wow. Oh. Still using that, huh? Survived the war? Yeah. Wow. Um, here's you know my favorite part. The role? You know who didn't survive the war? <laughs> Nazis. Is Joseph Goebbels. <laughs> Joseph That's Goebbels. Unalived himself as he should have. So. Yeah. I should have done it before any of this even happened. Uh, so... For some insane reason, (laughs) juries in those days had the right to withhold a first, second, or third place prize, or all of the above, when the works failed to meet the standards that they imposed. Huh? So, basically, they were like, uh, there's no first, second, or third place. No one gets an award. Everything sucks ass. So, So it's like being back in art school. Basically. So, (laughs) juries were known to withhold as many as 13 art medals in a single Olympics. So wow. there were years where people competed, no one got a medal. They were like, just what? go home and try again in four years. But they wouldn't allow literally professional art artists. And they would not allow professional what? artists to submit. But no, sorry, it's not up to standard, but also no professionals allowed. Yeah. Uh, mm. As you can imagine, this was a huge incentive for people to submit their best work. <laughs> Hate the Nazis. That's um, wild. Let's see. Let's send you some stuff. So mm. here's our boy. Oh, yeah. Here's Pierre. He's just chilling, doing his thing, walking around. I believe that's him in the hat with the cane. Or I could be wrong, actually. Oh, I don't know. I'm so excited. Uh, and here's a picture of some of the medals oh, look that at you him. can actually see as well. Oh, whoa, cool. I guess. If you were yeah. able to get them. Oh, yeah, I got them. So, judging by the medals won, Luxembourg yeah. painter Jean Jacobi is the most successful oh. Olympic artist, winning the gold medal for his 1924 painting, Etude du Sport, and for oh, his hell. drawing Rugby in 1928, which I believe are these two paintings right here. Let's see. Which you can see, see on the screen. See if this guy deserved the gold. They're pretty good. Oh, yeah. They're not bad. Not uh-huh. Okay. They're not bad at all. They're excellent. Bunch of rippling muscles. I'm just kidding. Rippling. Yeah. Um, they, they, he's got really good movement. Like, that's that captures, yeah. like... Yeah the chaos of the game really well yeah uh what's his name the the boxers um george bellows i believe is his name the painter i'm talking about Mm -mm. it kind of reminds me of george bellows a little bit uh swiss artist alex diggleman won three medals (laughs) a gold one in 1936 for his poster arosa e placard which is right here did you say diggleman diggleman (laughs) diggleman diggleman whoa that thing's cool (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so at one oh. point with the within the arts and illustration, they started splitting them into like design and stuff, so it wasn't just general drawings. Yeah. Danish writer Joseph Peterson won a silver medal on three occasions, 1924, 1932, and 1948. Hmm, good for him, I guess. Um, two people won medals in both sport and art competitions. Oh, interesting. So this guy two right Olympians. here, Walter right. Winnens. Won a gold oh, medal his... as a marksman. Look at that mustache. His mustache is that is wild. Oh, he literally looks like the dad in uh, <laughs> in Jumanji who is hunting the son. Oh my god, you're right. That's exactly what he looks like. 
He does. He has that exact like facial hair. I like how the hair. mustache turns into a goatee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so... But not in the way you'd think. No. It's impressive. That's an Olympic winning mustache. Is, that is. In the mustache So speaking category. of Jumanji hunting his son, oh. Winnens won a gold medal as a marksman at the 1908 Summer <laughs> Olympics in the Running Deer, which is a double shot competition. And then <laughs> he won a gold medal for his sculpture, an American Trotter. Oh. Which you can see here. Which is a Let's see. fine sculpture. It's lovely. Oh, it's fu- Oh, looks like that guy is. You know what he looks like? He looks like the groom of the stool for that horse. He looks like the groom of the horse stool. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> stool. Why is he? I don't like this sculpture. <laughs> I would would not have it, given him any medals. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't like it. <sighs> Explain to the audience what's happening and why it makes it's, you uncomfortable. I'm not going to tell you. Okay, here's the thing. It looks like this guy. First of all, the horse is a horse. And then uh-huh. on the back, he's got like. Of course, of looks, course. It looks like. <laughs> nice. Looks like this dude is holding onto the horse's tail while like squatting on top of two wheels that are okay. attached to the horse. Alex, you go. Yes, you probably I, know better. I I personally liken it to like um, in baseball, like the catcher, like standing behind yeah. at the pitch. Yeah. And he's like just ready to catch the ball, and this guy's just like that's ready to catch anything that comes out of that horse. <laughs> the horse, he's just that's what it looks right like against that horse's butt. Absolutely. Listen, what you know what it looks like to me? What a damn Olympic gold medal! <laughs> wow. Oh, oh man. Uh, the other person was Alfred Hajos of Hungary. I apologize, Hajos of Hungary. Mm-hmm. As a swimmer, he won two gold medals at the 1896 Athens Olympics. And then 28 huh. years later, he was awarded a silver medal in architecture for his stadium design co-design with Desso Lober. 28 mm, years good apart. Name. That's crazy. Because I was going to say the 18-whatever Olympics, those were the very first ones since bringing them back. Uh, yeah, yeah. So he's he's a double, double dipper. Pierre himself was actually also among the winners. He was afraid really? the nerdists... Yeah, he was afraid that all the nerds of art dorks wouldn't draw enough entrance, so he penned the winning ode under the pseudonyms George Horod and Martin Eschbach, oh, leaving smart. the metal jury unaware that he was, in fact, the Max Martin of his time. Okay, you know what? I do respect that because he didn't say it was him, so he definitely won fair and square. All right. Uh, John but Copley... he was a professional of- artist. Uh, no, or that's no. true. No, he was not. Was he not. was the professional Olympics organizer. Oh, uh, okay. So John Copley of Britain won one of the final uh-huh. medals awarded, a silver in 1948 for his engraving polo players, which you can see here, uh-huh. which is fine. It's f- oh, it is fine. It's not bad. No. Why do you describe it to the kids at home? Looks like some horses, you know. That's true. Chiaros- With people on Chiaros- them. Chiaro. Got some yes. chiaroscuro, Very chiaroscuro. That's true. Got some good negative space uh-huh. uh, in the yeah. legs there. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> dramatic. Giving it a, an art one hundred and one critique. Got some good line work going on. Uh, that horse is terrifying. Looks like a skeleton. But yeah, a looks horses. like a bunch of polo players. They look fine. Looks fine. This is bronze. He was... This is bronze. He was seventy three years old at the time and would be the oh. oldest medalist in oh. Olympic history. All right, I got some That respect. makes sense. After the 1948 Games, the Olympic art competitions were modified into a parallel art festival and exhibition held at the site of each summer and winter games. Oh, Basically, okay. they gave up. They did it for like one or two years because, you know, everyone was on hold during World War II. Mm-hmm. And then they came back to it. And it was like the uh, committee was like even more committed to being like absolute amateurs. And people were like, this shit sucks. Yeah. These rules are stupid. This is not working correctly. We hate all of this. This is pointless. <laughs> So they just stopped. All of that. All of it. They're just like, whatever, bye. Do they, do um, they still have these like side-by-side things that come to yeah, the Olympics? Yeah, I think they like still have art. like the whatever. Like, oh. art. It's not like competitions or anything, but they have like exhibitions and festivals and okay. stuff. But I will end with my favorite part of this whole story. The 151 medals that had been awarded to all those different countries we're officially yeah. stricken from the Olympic record. No, what? And currently, you didn't even get to keep them. <laughs> no, like this. And currently, just... do not count towards countries as current medal counts. So you can't even be like, "Look, I was an Olympian." All right, that no. is so nullified. Sayonara. Just those should count. Yeah, 
You won it. Oh. It's messed up. They just were like, people were so irritated by it that they were like, we don't even they give a shit. They just deleted it? Yeah, they just deleted it. That's why I've it. never heard of it. You That's why what? I've never Classic. heard of it. Exactly. Wow. Classic. Oh, okay. Wow. So you could bring back, <laughs> now that they don't care. Also, now I'm like, who would compete now? How would they bring oh, money back so into good. the Art Olympics? No. It'd just be a bunch of like AI art. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, that's true. It would probably be like, we didn't tell him that it was AI and it won. And then it would be some marketing stunt for chat GPT. Or that like literally already chat happens GPT. all the time. Yeah. It did happen. There was uh, already that AI, AI art. That, oh, yeah. That, well, AI that generated trash. It's not. Yeah. It could be like, we won an Olympic medal. Um. Anyway, so that's my tab wow. all about art and the Olympics and how it was. <laughs> correctly taken away because it was extremely <laughs> poorly managed and no one seemed to go back and want to fix it so they just left it out forever yeah, but did I feel they? like post war is like we just gotta do new stuff anyway just they're like, out with the old anymore. artists aren't people the last, they don't do they're anything not people good. um we should just marginal <laughs> push them to the very edges of society nothing. it's fine yeah so nothing to the world Kave, did you not read uh about they're talking about bringing back art in the Olympics for LA. Oh, I did huh? not see that. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's how I thought you like. Um... Oh, I missed that. Yeah, I just was yeah. reading um, the the article I found was from a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, uh, very I think it was recently. Like an That's piece. how I found out about art in the Olympics. Oh, what did you learn? Tell us. Uh, pretty much that um, they're talking about bringing back some of the art competition in the Olympics for LA in 2028. Interesting. I'm here. I can compete. I know. I'm an absolute amateur. Hey, do you guys need some dog shit drawings of bad <laughs> things? You want some Mothman? Drawings? I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> look, just look. wait till there's mid podcast categories in the Olympics. Oh, the, uh, we the will Oscars, sweep. the uh, the Emmys. Yeah. What is it? What would it be? Uh, there's podcast awards. I forget what they're there called right is? now. Oh, yeah, there's like the Webbies and <laughs> Potties. Oh, there's other ones. Potties. The pot- Potties. I want the a potty. Stools. Again, stoolies. stool. <laughs> The stoolies. <laughs> the stoolies. We would definitely win uh, all the stoolies. We we do talk about it a lot. Alex, I don't know if you know it's your a part, part of, of a grand tradition on this podcast to, mm-hmm. to bring up uh, something poop related. Stool. So I actually Poopies. did not, but you know, you didn't when know I that about when when you Us? asked me to be on this <laughs> podcast, and I thought about what do I want to bring to the table? What do I think Is that it? my friends Hannah and Kave would would really appreciate. I thought you knew about poop. And you knew. Grew up with you understood. And I knew. Thank you. You were well, so excited ex- when I revealed it, too. <laughs> speaking oh, of excreting and getting rid of things, what did we say? Neutralize? Speaking of neutralizing. Neutral- evacuating. <laughs> evacuating. It's time for us to evacuate, neutralize, expel, defecate our tabs mm. for the week. Yeah. Okay. Oh, do you have something you wanted to say, Hannah? I say we maybe do a toilet flush. Oh. I think that's perfect. Alex, you want to count us down from three? All right. Yeah. Okay, get ready. Get ready. Three, two, one. Ooh, fl- oh, it's not going down. There's too much. <laughs> call, wait, call, under the, call the plumber. Oh, no. Call your yeah, call the plumber. Call How do I save my cat? Whatever his name was. Jake. Jake, Jake shows up covered like in State cat Farm. hair. He's there. Jake Sully. <laughs> uh, wow. All right. Okay. That On to listener emails. Good. Hannah, you're up first. All right. This is from Taylor. We don't know where Taylor's from. Taylor says, hi, I'm just catching up on the older episodes and listen to Kaveh talk about the Nintendo hotline. All right. It brought back my favorite story from my mom. When my parents were dinks <laughs> for dinks. D- d- dual income, Double no income, kids. Yep. no kids. All I used cats. to make the joke that that we were sink, we were sinking and not dinking because we had single income, no kids for a little bit. Uh, uh, that's also uh, Doug's neighbor. Remember Mr. Dink? Oh yeah, he was a dink. Oh. That was the whole thing. Is that's why he had all those different contraptions. Remember every oh, week he was wow. like, "Oh, I've got some new toys," because he was yeah. and his wife were had no kids, so they had all this money. Oh my god! Cool. When my parents were dinks fresh out of college, they lived near my cousins, who were about four and eight year old, eight years old. My parents would babysit my cousins all the time, and my mom would play Nintendo with them. It was the classic scenario where the younger one just got an unplugged controller. 
He clearly didn't mind cool. because one day he was so excited and jumping around. He then gripped and hit his head on their glass table, earning him his first set of stitches. Oh, my God. I'm right. <laughs> Look, Nintendo-related injuries are a real 90s kid thing. Yeah, it's true. I got I got a controller thrown at me multiple times by my brother. <laughs> Hit in the head. In it's your fine. 30s. <laughs> Yesterday. Um, I'm writing in because the older thanks, brother. Stu. Thanks, Stu. Rhymes with poo. No, not so much coincidence. Bisk. <laughs> thanks, Bisk. Thanks, Bisk. Thanks, thanks, soup. Okay. I'm writing in because the older brother would call my mom at her very official engineering job at the power oh. plant to ask her for help on Mario levels. So I may not have stories of calling into the Nintendo Power Hotline. My mom was the counselor for my cousins, which I think is pretty cool. Love the podcast. It's been an awesome bringer of joy during some rougher days. Taylor. Uh, thanks, Taylor. I appreciate you writing in. Um, that's awesome. What do you got? Uh, let's see. Email number two is from Chris. From also an undisclosed location, uh, but for reasons. Hello, Kava and Hannah. I Hello. love listening to the podcast. I love the chemistry between you two and listening to you info dump. You guys do an amazing job compiling and retelling your tabs to fun story compel to fun compelling stories and info. Thank you. Oh, uh, the tabs thanks. I will be talking about dot 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 have oh. the opposite effect. Oh, <laughs> for context. Yeah. I work at an yeah. undisclosed airport as a ramp agent. This is why we don't know where Chris is from. Uh, Going rogue. Ramp agents are the people that load and unload the bags to the plane, and you see them with the orange sticks guiding the plane into the gate. Um, that job's yeah. awesome. I've always wondered how you even get to that. but Like, shout out for anyway. getting our luggage there. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. From Artist Listen, Alley. Shout out yeah. to them. Shout out to the, the air traffic controllers. Oh, shout out to people who don't let us all die. Jesus yeah, Christ, absolutely. what a thankless job of like keeping safety together forever. Can you imagine? Uh, uh, no, I don't I, I don't even no, want to. Don't, I don't want to know what goes on. <laughs> yes, I just want to know that you. we'll stay alive. Thank you. You know what? Triple salute I to just... all you fine folks. At my position, I am provided a scanner and physical paper of the flight information. The paper gives me the number of bags, arrival time, gate, and other info I won't bore you with. With the fast-paced and spontaneous environment, I end up having to Google search the airline initials with the flight number, for example, Air Canada Flight 304 equals AC304, because sometimes it's more accurate than the paper. <laughs> uh -oh. So by the end of the day, I tend to collect dozens and dozens of di tabs of different <laughs> flights I have completed. If I were to not close them on a daily basis, I'm sure I'd have my own, you guessed it, 500 open tabs. That's Maybe so I should funny. start my own podcast of stories about working <laughs> at an airport. Ha ha. I actually would yeah, be I dig fascinated it. Uh -huh. to know yeah, all I want to listen to all the tea. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Also, it's like, are, is there beef between people? Like, do the do the ramp people hate, like, the air traffic controller yeah, people? To right? the like, there's so much. I don't even know what happens. Like I'm Southwest fascinated Southwest versus to know. Delta or something. Like, what the yeah. flight attendants just, like, flip them all off out the windows. And Gate they, agents, yeah. like, revolting. I bet you there's plenty Ooh. of drama there that you can I'm mine. Sure. I bet there's um, so much. Oh, that's what I'm saying. It's like any job. There's always drama yeah. in something. One of my favorite Reddits is that um, hobby drama where it's like they collect things that are happening in very specific hobby groups on the mm -hmm. internet and like just stuff that goes down. So like the crochet hobbyists are all hangry at each other. Anyway, what were you going to say? Oh, no, no. Like there's this one girl I watched her little um, like spilling the tea videos. I think it's like Aerith Girl or something. But anyway, she does like just these snippets of drama that like they're not in any circle that you know about and and she'll just spill yeah. it. she'll give you a little summary so yeah i, I learned about nice. a lot of things that way um just to wrap up the email pretty boring compared to other listeners listener emails i'm sure which i don't agree with it's actually pretty mm -hmm. interesting listening from the tarmac chris <laughs> thanks thank chris. you chris uh if you have a tab that you would like to submit to the show Please email 500opentabs at gmail.com. That's 500. You can also try submitting a voice memo, which we would love, but keep that at, uh, to under a minute. Uh, let okay. us know uh, about a tab that you learned, something fun. Let us know where you're from and make sure to include the link. Um, otherwise, I think that about wraps us up. Right, Hannah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and just want to say thank you to Alex for coming on the show. Thank and you. is there anything that you'd like to plug? Uh, One of your well, many 
appearances. Oh, my many appearances. Um, as I'm still recovering from like seven shows in nine or ten weeks. Because uh, I'm insane. You're insane. You're crazy. You do a lot of shows. You do a lot of shows. Weekend, because oh, we were planning this episode, I was like, mm-hmm. what week are you free? And you're, you're like, like Here's I two can't weeks. record in three months. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. a convention machine. You're right. Well, thank you again so much for having me on. Um, but let's see. So uh, Labor Day weekend, I'll be at uh, SAC Anime Summer in Sacramento, California. Oh, you'll be up in SAC. I uh, know. Um, and then the next weekend, I'll be at Colossal Con East in the Poconos of Pennsylvania, where okay. I have to, where Alex has to rent a car at LaGuardia in New York oh. and drive for three hours to get to the convention. To Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania. Do they not have airports? No. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, not, the first not near heard. the Poconos. It's, uh, it's uh, I don't know, where rich people go on vacation. The Pocono um, sounds like it's an island, like off the yeah, coast now of it's Florida just in, or something. Into the woods. Or into Greece. The um, but Don't yeah, I have it. a lot of shows. And uh, my stuff will also be at Rose City Comic Con that same weekend. I have a friend who will be oh, up there yeah. um, right. slinging my wares. Oh, but nice. Double? You're double conning? I'm, I'm, I'm double, double dipping. Meanwhile, I did get permission. Um, then I get to go to my cousin's wedding the next weekend, who's also in nice. Pennsylvania. So it all worked out. So it if you show up at her cousin's wedding, you'll know where to find her. Oh yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah, where can uh, where can they follow you on social media? Uh, they can follow me at Alexandra Brot on Instagram, and that's B R O D T. B R O D T, pronounced Brot. Um, oh, and then German. my website, alexandrabrot.com. You can sign up for my newsletter and uh, yeah. basically listen to me ramble about stuff. I also have Patreon. Yeah, she's got great stuff. Line. A lot of it's like. Um, like, cat cactus. Uh, yes, yeah, cat, cat, cat kiss. Cat kiss is what it sounds like. A cactus cat with a, a cat face. Yes. Very cute. On a cactus. Uh, I am yeah. working on a children's book about him, by the way. Oh, Are you serious? That's yeah. awesome. It's going to be really cute. Like, her Fantastic. stuff is great. I use your bags that you sell for no. literally everything. Those little zip bags. So thank you. The bags of highly recommend. Thank you again, Alex. Yep. Of course, uh, we also have a Patreon. We also have a uh-huh. YouTube where you can watch this. Full video episodes are available. We have a Discord that you can sign up. We have our 500 Open Roads. And uh-huh. we have a wonderful editor, Alyssa, that I would like to thank, despite what Hannah says at the end of every episode. Thank you, Alyssa. Alyssa who? <laughs> I just like to say that in me and Alyssa's private conversations, I thank her way more than you thank her. So. Oh, sure you do. Sure, we have Jan. probably a free conversation. Sure, oh. Jan. Thank you. Alyssa. I want to guys... thank Alyssa yes. too. Yeah, for cutting Everybody. all my insanity earlier. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't even worry. Anyway, uh, Hannah, why don't you tell everybody where they can find us? Oh, uh, on Instagram at five hundred open tabs, the number five hundred five zero zero open tabs, and uh, that's it. You said the other ones. Yeah, please subscribe, rate, tell all your friends. Review. Please tell your friends. Telling your friends has been very has been very helpful. good. That's actually help, been very helpful. Continue to do that. If you're a friend who got this pod or uh, started listening to this podcast because a friend recommended, keep it going. Recommend keep it, it going. to one of your friends. Yeah, we want to grow this so we can. We're trying like to grow as much as more. possible. We're trying to grow it like, like the like mold, mold on on the back of my ears. We're trying to just oh. make it just a giant sporous. I don't have oh. mold. I just I'm saying that. Oh, I, <laughs> I grossed know, you out. I'm, That's I'm, fun. I'm picturing it. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, speaking of mold, the one last thing. Life. <laughs> Hannah's no. got a book coming out. Oh yeah, I got a. I've got a book coming out. It's not moldy. It's called. It's called. I almost said five hundred open tabs. It is called yeah. Cat <laughs> 500 People. Open tabs the book. <laughs> and it comes out when this comes out. It'll be out in about less than a, a little over a month. And if you want to catch me at a signing, I'll be at Vroman's on the 29th in Pasadena. Twenty ninth of, of October, and then I'll be at. Somewhere in Portland, I'll get there. Well, look on my Instagram. In New York, I helped with sure. that book. I helped with that book. Remember? Yeah, you did. I oh, did. Uh, I did finally read ones. it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you can get that book today. <laughs> Don't tell me. Don't tell me that. Oh, I'm going to tell you oh. on the air, uh, dear listeners. It is hysterical and it's profound and it's beautiful. Highly recommend it. Are you it's serious? A fantastic do you read. mean all that? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, I do. It's great. I loved it. Stop. I want to read it. It goes Thanks. in a different direction than I thought it would. It's wonderful. Yeah. I'm very proud of you. You did a fantastic job. 
So everybody Stop. go check oh, it out. You. Cat people, do the pre-orders. You can also get uh, the tote bag. A tote right? bag. I don't know. Can yeah. I'm I done with this. The tote bag. Most importantly, I, now what I'm thanked in it. I accept no, my the best trip book ever. to Pasadena, Ooh, which is you actually- You should do that. October for Lightbox Expo, October twenty fourth. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna be at Lightbox. That's why they scheduled me at, at that time because Lightbox is gonna be. And then I'm gonna come anyway. visit you and be yeah. better at you. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll end you if you don't. Okay, okay. it's a deal. Uh, anyway, okay. that's all, folks. Alex, thanks again. Uh, and until Alex. then, Segundus Nixon shot five times on this wall. That's my new is exit. That, is that our <laughs> is that our new sign off? <laughs> Secundus, Secundus Nixon shot five times on this wall. Wow. Alex has no idea Al- what we're talking Alex about, but it's like, great. What? <laughs> Nixon's matter. ancestor did it in Pompeii. It doesn't matter. <laughs> None of it's real. Look, but we're just, that's just nonsense. Keep it Josie. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Thanks, Alex. Bye. 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 See ya.